Hi, I'm Jennifer Witherspoon, the librarian at Fortune or High, and I'm here to introduce to you Apple iPad 101. For those of you that are comfortable with the iPad, this may not be your cup of tea, but for those of you that have just received your iPad, this is going to be something that you'll want to know. So when you get your iPad, you're going to get this, and it's going to look like this, and you're going to say, that doesn't look like an iPad. Well, this is an OtterBox cover. This is the charger for it. So one of the things you need to know about your charger is it is down here covered up by this little rubbery flap, so you want to keep it clean. And you'll just plug this piece in. There's a little circle on the top, and that always goes up to the top. Plug it in, and then this piece pulls out and plugs into the wall. So my charger, mine is already charged, so we're going to leave that. Then you have your OtterBox. You pull up on the two sides at a time, and it'll pop up. Now, this you could put to the side. If you have an iPad cart, you'll find that these on the actual iPad will not fit in there. So this sometimes might just never be used. So you put it to the side. You can flip it up to set your iPad like so, or like so. And then you can turn it to lay it, lay it back a little more. So this might be more leisure reading. So for my purposes, I'm going to turn it up like this. Now, let's talk about the different portions of our iPad. Here, and these are an OtterBox cover, and they are meant to be stuck tight, so you have to kind of pull. This is your headphone jack, where you would plug in for your headphone, or if you had speakers in your classroom, you would put that there. This is your power button. Your camera is right here. This is your sound. And this little piece right here, we're going to talk about in just a moment. It could be for locking your screen, or it could be for turning it to mute only. And your speakers are right down here. So, your iPad will work any direction it's meant to move with you. So, I'm going to turn it on. At this point, we're going to take a break. And uh, Tanya's going to come around this side. Alright, so we're going to turn our iPad on on top here. And this is the screen that you're going to see. Now, you may turn it on and it does nothing, but there's a little Apple icon that comes up. And uh, give it a few minutes and it'll come up. Up here it tells me that I have 100% charge. If you're charging it, it's going to have a little black lightning bolt. So let's get started. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to have to set up. And you're going to notice like there's different languages down here, but we're, we're fine. It's going to be in English. So slide it to the right. Now you're going to notice this is the setup screen. You want to make sure that you have English selected down here. You're going to push your blue arrow at the top right. And then we want, yes, we're in the United States, so we want to help that. Next. Now we're going to choose a network. Now here's this tricky situation. If you're just setting this up for the very first time, choose Azel Wireless. You will have to put a tech request in with uh, the technology department, and they can set you up with Azel iPad. But Azel Wireless will work for right now. And this is your Wi-Fi, and you have to have Wi-Fi on here for it to really work. Next. And so it's going to take a few minutes. <coughs> And you're going to ena enable location services because this is going to help you later on when you lose that iPad or you misplace it or that student paid a dirty trick on you. So we're going to set this up as a new iPad. If this, for some reason, you're having to restore it from backup, that, that's another time, but you would use iCloud or iTunes. So if you already have an iTunes account with your iPhone or something, don't, don't iTunes back it up here. You want to do it with a new iPad. Next. So, before you start this, you would want to have an email account. So, at this point, if you didn't have an email account, you would go create one. And I do not suggest that you use your school one because you, if you purchase anything of your own and for some reason you were to leave the district and you use your school email, it wouldn't go with you. So, <clears throat> let's create a uh, free Apple ID. And you're going to need uh, to give it your birthday. So you're going to see how old I am, unfortunately. All right, next. And you're going to give yourself your name. you got to be careful. And next. So I want to use my current email address because it's going to be the address the email address that I've created and I'm going to use um, a Gmail account C 
So and then I should be able to push next. Now it's going to ask for me to put a password in. And you can see this, it's fine because I'm going to create, I'm going to delete this as soon as we're done with this. So I will tell you this, it wants you to have a capital letter and some number spelled today. Capital H O N E T dollar sign one two. Let's try that. There we go. So now you, I would suggest that you uh, create some security, security questions. It's going to ask you if you forget your uh, password at one point. Um, so you can pick from a list here. So I'm going to pick the first time I flew on a plane and I went to Florida. And then ask you what's your dream job for a children's book. I'm going to do my, favorite, my first car, which was a GMC. Jimmy Woody. So, and then my next question, um, one of these. So, and where my parents met was a good question. And I'm going to say Boyd. So, there's all my answers. I'm going to click next. Now, this is a rescue email. So, for the purpose that you actually do forget something, you forgot your email, I would put, this is the one I would put my school email address in. And my fingers are pretty big, so this is not uh, for big-fingered people sometimes. And this is at azelsd.net. Next, email updates. I would say yes so that you know that when you need to update your iPad, if you don't use your iPad on a regular basis, this is something that you would definitely want so that when you do go to use your iPad, <clears throat> you are on the latest software so that you don't get caught boggled down with uh, updating it. So next, you can send, this is the agreement, you can read all of this. Um, I'm a pretty trusted person, so I'm just gonna click, click agree. But if you would like to send this to yourself by email, you can have it sent to you. So we're gonna click send. And so this will send you this agreement to your email address that we used, agree. <clears throat> and it makes sure, are you sure you want to agree? Yes. <clears throat> so now it's creating our Apple ID. We will need an Apple ID in order to um, purchase apps and other things for your iPad. So this is another important thing. We, you, we do want to use the iCloud. And the iCloud is going to help you uh, have a place to store your information, your apps. It also is going to help you be able to search and locate your iPad if by chance you do misplace it. So we want to back it up to the iCloud. This will help you in case um, some kid comes in and locks your iPad and you can't get in and you have to erase everything and reset it up. You can back it up back from the iCloud. It'll remember what you had. This is the app I'm telling you about, Find My iPad. This will help you later on. We'll talk about how to find your iPad if it's lost. So you set up, with, let's go ahead and set up our email with um, this is the email we have that we created our Apple ID with. Let's put a password in there. Your password's optional. Um, this is where you would create your uh, email, um, your, put your email password so that it can automatically get in there. Um, and my password, I have to remember what I put. Of course, it's not, it's, it's not, I can't remember the, <laughs> the password I used, so today we're just going to click OK, and we're just going to skip this, and it's going to ask us, it should ask us if we want to skip it. Yes, we want to skip it. So, do we want, if we have an error with our iPad, do we want to send Apple the errors and the problems we're having? So, we want to say yes, so that hopefully the errors that we're having are typical errors people might be having so they can fix the bugs. That would be why we have updates in software. So we are ready to start using our iPad. And this is what you see. <clears throat> so we have to verify our email address and we'll do that um, later. <coughs> 
so all of these apps you see on this screen here this is what we call the home screen and you'll notice a little dot down here at the bottom and the more apps you put on there's only a certain amount of apps that can be put on a page at a time so the more little you'll see as the more apps you put on the more little buttons you'll get that means you're going to have several different uh, pages open it uh, open now if I'm not mistaken, uh, the iPad only goes up to eight pages. And after that, you can still put apps on, but you won't be able to see them. So we're going to talk about putting apps into folders in a, later, in a later segment. One thing that you do need to know, these apps cannot be deleted. These come on the Apple iPad itself. They cannot be deleted. You will also notice, though, um, if you <coughs> have a student iPad, student iPads should not have the Apple uh, App Store on the iPad. Most things will be restricted from them to get to, so you have access to it, but the students shouldn't. And if you do let a student use your iPad, you need to make sure and you really need to monitor them closely because the reason restrictions are on the iPads is because there's certain things that students can go to that they shouldn't. So let's, um, let's talk about what are some things that we can do here. First thing we want to do is go to settings. There's a whole bunch of things here. So one thing that you need to know up here is airplane mode. Unless you're flying with your, your iPad, you'll never touch that. Wi-Fi. Notice it's going to ask all the Wi-Fi's in the area. It's going to, um, you can ask it to automatically join. And that's what I would suggest turning on. Because if you have Wi-Fi at home, it's going to try and recognize that at home and then if you know your password and everything you can connect your iPad to your Wi-Fi at home. You can use your iPad without Wi-Fi but it's going to be limited in what you can and cannot do. So um, other, uh, if you knew the name of the network you were trying to look for like the Azel iPad that would be something that you would want but you can't do that. The technology department has to do that for you. Another thing you want to look at is Bluetooth. If you have Bluetooth available um, in your car, this might be something you'd want to use because you could Bluetooth uh, your iTunes music from your iPad to your car. Also, if you uh, decide that you don't like the OtterBox case that comes with your iPad and you would like to change it and get one with a keyboard, most keyboards are wireless. They don't hook up to the iPad anywhere. So you would have to turn it on and it would come through the Bluetooth. Do not disturb. You definitely want to know a here. Do not disturb. You want to know about this right here. It's not going to take it to a screen because if you use your iPad at home and your email is hooked up on here and you have it to notify you when you get an email or uh, when there's an update available, it's going to ding. It's going to make noises unless you put it on mute. Well, let's say you forget to put it on mute and uh, you have Facebook on your on your iPad and you are looking at your Facebooks and it's going off because somebody's talking about something you would want to put on do not disturb and you can set the hours and you can set it by time and it can <coughs> you can edit your do not disturb scheduled from you could say from 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. you do not want your iPad to go off at all and so it won't go off. You can actually do this as, as well if you have an iPhone with your iPhone now and you can have it to set um, always allow calls from favorites so if you have your ch children's name, your best friend or somebody in your favorites then they can always uh, get through your do not disturb or if you could have if somebody's calling you so let's say you're afraid that you know um, you have an elderly parent that you're worried about and you want to make sure that they can get to you if something happens in the middle of the night. You can turn on the repeated calls and that means that if they call more than once, it's going to interrupt you. But that is if for your iPhone, for your iPad, you're most likely not going to really ever need this. So I'm going to turn my um, Do Not Disturb off. So then you have notifications. This means anytime something happens in these apps or anything, they want to know they're going to notify you of some change so FaceTime if somebody's trying to call you on FaceTime we'll talk about that in just a moment because you actually may want to FaceTime with other people in the district with FaceTime you do have to actually have a Wi-Fi account and you are you have to have it Wi-Fi you can't just be anywhere so we're gonna turn it off because I don't plan on using it uh, FaceTime on here so your messages 
anytime you get a text message, not an email message, a text message. I'm going to turn this off because I don't plan to use my iPad for text messaging. Reminders. Yes, I want that on because if I'm using my calendar, it's going to pop up reminders as well. So I'm going to make sure it does a banner. Uh, and, and It won't let you choose. You either do banners or alerts. I'm going to choose the alerts because it's going to pop up in the middle of the screen and middle of whatever I'm doing to give me the alert. And I want a reminder alerts. You can choose. You'll notice it starts making different noises. So uh, I, I want to have a choo-choo on mine. So, in this can view in the lock screen, yes, that means when the iPad is off and it's time for, or when, excuse me, when the iPad is completely dark and it's not being used, it's going to go to what they call the lock screen. And so, let's say you're in the middle of teaching and you forgot that appointment with the principal at 2 o'clock, this will automatically still come on, even if it's not being used. Then we have the calendar, that kind of goes with the same thing, make sure, same information, then you have photos. If anybody uploads photos or you upload photos, I don't plan on using that, so I'm going to turn that off. And you have Game Center. I'm going to turn that off because I don't plan on using games on mine. Now, you may use games on your on your iPad and you words with friends, things like that. If you would like to, you can turn it on when somebody's turn. It's your turn, but I don't plan on using that. And then, of course, we have Mail. Yes, I want it to notify me when I have mail. I want it to give me an alert, not a banner. And I'll show you about banners in just a moment. Um, I want the badge app icon on. Um, I don't know what that means, so I'm just going to leave it alone. The sounds, I want to turn it on. And I want my new, uh, I want it to be the Calypso. Or, let's see. Hmm. I'm going to do a bell because that doesn't sound as uh, disrupting as the others. So I want to show a preview. I'm going to turn that one off just in case somebody sends me something, uh, a, a parent sends me an email and I'm having a student use it. I'm going to turn that off because it won't show me a preview of the email. It'll just show me that I do have the email. And again, I'm going to want to view it in lock screen. So there's all of our notifications we have going. These tell me these aren't in notification. And at any time I want to put them in there, you can just go back and turn it on. So, at this point, now we're into general. Let's talk about what general tells us. General tells us about your iPad. Here's one thing that I highly, highly, highly suggest you do. Um, this serial number right here is um, the only way if you were to lose or misplace your iPad and you really feel like maybe you left it at the hotel that you went to the conference at and you feel like maybe the, the, the maid took it or whatever, the only way I, Apple will be able to track it is by this number here. And most people don't know that. Most people don't know to copy that down. I'm going to show you how to take a picture of this and save it and send it to yourself so you'll always have it. Um, and so what happens is anybody can take this iPad, wipe it clean. Uh, and when I say wipe it clean, I mean delete everything in there and reuse it. But if this number, if this serial number is reported to Apple as stolen, that person cannot go in and still use that app, the iPad. It'll be completely useless to them because, and then hopefully Apple can track it down for you. So I'm going to show you how to take a picture of that in just a moment. The next thing you have is your software update. This is going to tell you if you're up to date. And you always want to keep this up to date because sometimes apps won't work with older um, software so you need to make sure it's always continuously updating and it sometimes will take a while so you need to make sure and just kind of make sure that's uh, that um, notification is on so that you know when to update it I suggest you uh, look check it um, at least once a week in the evening time after school would be good so then you have the usage this is what you're going to need to know this tells me I have no music I have no videos and I have no photos in my camera this is going to be where you're going to spend a lot of your storage is going to be. Notice I have 13.5 gigabytes. I can store, I can have 5 gigabytes for complete free in the iCloud. So you would want to store a lot of your stuff as much as you can in the iCloud so that anywhere you go you can access it. Because anything you put on here, as in music or videos, you should be able to, if it's in the, in the iCloud, you can go to any PC or anybody's iPad and locate it. So, <clears throat> I have no data, it's not going to let me click on it. I want to know how much battery percentage, that's what that button uh, up there shows me. If I turn it off, 
it goes away. But I want to know because at, when it gets to 20%, it's going to give you a, a warning and saying, hey, you're, you're running low. So it tells me that I've used it for 26 minutes and it's been in standby for 42 minutes. The next thing is um, your volume purchasing number. That's what VPN stands for. And you're going to want to know that. And that is something that you're going to hear probably sometime next year, especially when uh, if you're a secondary teacher because the, te the students are going to be purchasing apps using a, a VPN. So right now that's nothing for us right now iTunes Wi-Fi sync that means if you're on your computer and you find a song or you find an app that you like on iTunes on your on your laptop or your home computer it'll sync to your iPad automatically it automatically put it on there when you open it spotlight search we're going to it's on and so what that does is when we go and search for something let's say you have seven pages of 20 apps and you don't have time to go look for it we're going to do a spotlight search and I'll show you in just a second what that is auto lock this means your screen, if you're not using it in two minutes, five minutes, ten minutes, or never, um, it will automatically go to a lock screen. And if you're, um, you tend to lay your, your iPads down or lay your stuff down or your keys and you tend to lose things, I highly suggest you put this on. So we're going to put auto lock on and we're going to put the passcode lock on as well. So we're going to turn on passcode and we're going to put in a passcode. It's very important that you remember this number because if you do not remember this number, you're going to end up erasing all your information and you're going to be um, up the creek without a paddle there. So we want to require the password immediately if somebody tries to get on. And we want, we've got the simple passcode on, that's fine. That's the four digit number. If you want to make your life more complicated, go for it and turn that off. So. <coughs> We want to allow access when the picture and the picture frame. Yes, um, that means they can take pictures with your iPad even if it's locked. But that's it; they can't get to anywhere. This is erased data. If your information, if your iPad contains private information, emails from parents, things, I might, I would might probably suggest you do that. But um, it's not necessary, so we're just going to keep that off. Then we have iPad cover lock and unlock. This automatically locks and unlocks your iPad when you close and open the iPad cover. And that is talking about the uh, OtterBox. And so that's on. Restrictions. This enables restrictions. That means we're going to have to put our code in. That means we are going to uh, allow or not allow certain things to happen in our iPads. So, for example, one of the things that you might want to know is music and podcasts, explicit material. This says we're allowing explicit material. So, let's say you have a teenage son and he downloads the latest rap song that talks about things he shouldn't be listening to or whatever the case may be. You would want to turn this off just in case some student gets a hold of your iPad and listens to your music. But um, So, I'm just going to go ahead and turn that off. Um, In-app purchases. You're going to find as you're purchasing apps, especially the games, it'll allow you to purchase more apps inside those apps. So um, if you don't ever uh, let young children uh, get a hold of your iPads, this then you can uh, turn it off and it's, uh, turn it on and it'll be, be fine. However, um, if that's not the case and you have, for example, myself, a two-year-old that likes to grab a hold of your iPad and she gets on anything and gets click happy, you would definitely want to turn that on. I would also suggest that you require a fit uh, and uh, require your password anytime you purchase an app. And what this is going to do also, um, if you purchase, if you let's say you're you've got about 15 minutes of your lunch and you want to buy some apps, if you put your password in once, in the next 15 minutes it's going to remember it. Um, but if you want, if you say it immediately, every time you buy an app, you're going to have to put your your password in there. Location services, the privacy. We want to allow changes and things of that nature. Um, so we're gonna we're just these are all recommended settings. We're just gonna leave these alone. So now let's go to lock rotation. Remember I talked to you about um, on the side here is a little switch. That's what the rotation is talking about. See if you notice the iPad moves as you move it. If I can lock the rotation, 
uh, right, oh, excuse me. Right now I have it set up as um, this little switch is for my mute. If you want to, if you never tend to mute yours or you always keep it turned down, I might suggest you turn this to lock rotation so that if you have the switch on, you'll see a little orange dot if it's on. It won't move. But if I turn it off on the switch, it'll move. And you'll see a little circle. Or if I want to lock the rotate, I want to use the side switch to mute it. Um, you'll see a little button that's muted. And now it's not. And so that tells me how loud it is. Multitasking gestures, I really, um, this is on already and it tells you you can use um, four or five fingers to pinch for the home screen. You can swipe to reveal multitasking bar, you can swipe left to reveal uh, between apps. And I'll show you that in just a moment. <coughs> One other thing I'm going to show you is a thing called accessibility. Now, if you are a school counselor and you have to do testing or you are a testing coordinator and you have to do tests for students and they have to be able to type their um, test for star writing. This is something you'll definitely want to learn. If you scroll down here on the screen to learning and guided access, you're going to turn this on. You're going to switch it to on. Now, we need to be able to, we need to turn this on and we're going to set a passcode and I'm just using the same passcode for everything if you'll notice so it's set you don't know that it's set but it's set it's it's listening and so I'm going to show you about that in just a moment so we've turned it on and you use it inside apps or on the web so other things you want to do this is um, a definitely things for special ed departments um, for students that need extra help with the iPads this is definitely something you'd want to know voiceover um, <coughs> If you you want to hear a voiceover, um, settings alert important. Voiceover changes the gestures used to control iPad. Are you sure you want to continue? No, we're going to cancel that because I don't need that. But this might be something for your kids um, that cancel button. Yes, cancel button. So okay, we have to. So we've turned that off. But uh, that might be for your kids that need help with um, extra speaking. You can change the rate of the speaking voice. For example, you know, I'm super fast. So you would maybe want to turn my voice down. Typing feedback. Another thing you might use for your special ed students. Use phonetics. Use pitch change. You can put braille on. All those kinds of things. Um, another thing you can do is zoom in, make your font bigger and larger so kids can see what's visual. Larger text, you can choose your text size. This is really um, more for things like in mail, your contacts, your calendars. We're just, we're going to put it on off because I'm fine with this for right now. My eyes are getting bad. We can invert the colors. So if you wanted it, you can turn it to black in different colors. I'm going to put the, it's on this white. Speak selection. This is something I'm definitely also going to turn on for myself because what you can do here, let's say you have um, a student that needs reading assistance and you're having them read an article on the newspaper. So you would turn speak selection on. You can pick your dialects here. So for your students that are ESL, you definitely you, know, you can pick their language. Um, I know, for example, we're getting a new student in next year that knows no English and she's from Mexico. Now notice, I would choose Mexico Spanish and not España Spanish because um, they are two different types of, so if I were, if she were learning something I, that she has never heard before or never been introduced before, I definitely would turn this on for her. But um, we're just going to leave it at default and we're going to choose U.S. English, but notice you can do Australian English, British English, Irish English. And so they will all speak in those different dialects. And what this does is we're going to highlight the words. And what that does is um, as you're... Okay, that's a little fast, so we're going to slow it down. 
So as you're going through the article, they will drag their finger across it and the iPad will read it back to them in the language that you chose. So then we have Speak Auto Text. We're going to turn that on anytime that auto, um, auto corrections, auto capitalization is going to tell them. But I'm going to turn this off because I don't need that. Hearing, um, you can turn it to mono. It's right in the middle right now. You can, if a child needs help, you can turn that on. Um, assistive touch. This is something I would not mess with unless you're really comfortable with your iPad and you know what you do. Because as soon as you turn these on, anything that you do, the iPad remembers that as a movement and you have to remember what you did. So just a fair warning, kind of stay away from that. Um, and we're, we're good. And the notice that uh, triple click right now is for our guided access. So you have sounds, you can turn all of that. Brightness. So let's say, for example, you are reading an e-bed, uh, an e-book, an e-book inside in bed, and um, your husband, like my husband, he goes to bed early, so he doesn't like a lot of light. So you can turn your brightness down, so where you can see it just enough, um, but it's not too bright, or you can turn it up. And that is one of the drawbacks about an iPad in the um, in the bright light of the sun outside. Sometimes it's really hard to see, so you have to play around with the auto, the brightness. Your picture frame, that talks about if you are looking, showing pictures, what it'll do. So that's something you might want to play with, but I'm just going to leave it. Privacy settings, um, this talks about contacts. Um, all of these are considered private. I'm not too sure what this is. We'll have to play around. So iCloud, let's go in and check our mail. So it's not going to let me check my notice because I have not verified my account. It's not letting me do anything to see how it's all kind of grayed out. Once I go in and verify my account, it will let me. Your mail and contacts, I'll show you in just a minute how you can set up your school email address um, on here and we'll do that. Notes, it tells you um, you can change your font, reminders. Messages again. Remember, we said we weren't going to do that. FaceTime, Maps, um, Maps. You can do miles, or if you're a science teacher, you may want to turn yours to kilometers so your students learn that. It tells you always label in English, normal size. Safari is the web browser where you may be using Internet Explorer or Mozilla Firefox on your computer. Uh, the iPads recognize and default to Safari, and they use the search engine of Google. And I'll show you in just a minute uh, where you'll find Google. You do not have to add the Google app. iTunes, let's talk about this. Let's get this set up. So here's my Apple I, uh, ID that I created. And let's go ahead and put my email address in that I had created. Oh, and I remember that we had to do the, the funky S because it wanted a more complicated one. We're going to sign in. Hopefully it's going to work. Hasn't been used. So this is telling me this Apple ID has not been used in the iTunes store. I know that because I haven't bought anything with it yet. So we want to review what they tell me. And so it's going to load. Okay, so we've set up our iTunes um, Apple ID account, and so now it takes us to the screen and it wants to know, do you want to download these free apps? Um, and yes, because the district is definitely going to be using iTunes U next year. Um, iBooks is where you can purchase books. Um, we're going to talk about different apps for that. Uh, Podcasts, that's where you definitely would want to maybe be putting some of your lessons. Find My Friends, if you have your children on here or you want to find where your friends are go for it you don't necessarily have to and then yes we are going to put find my iPhone which is also the iPad uh, app as well so we're going to download free it says your apps are downloading you can continue browsing while you wait or um, for them to finish so we're going to go okay now we want to confirm our country yes And so this may take a while, especially since we were downloading uh, several at a time. 
So we're going to let it do its thing. And if it needs us to do anything else, it's going to pop up. So we're going to go, we're going to push the home button down here. Um, this is where we can rearrange our apps. And we're going to do that in just a moment. So we're going to dismiss this and slide our finger to the right and go back to our home, original home screen and click on settings. I want to show you something in Safari that we didn't go over. If you notice this little um, uh, information right here, pop-up blockers or pop block pop-ups. Um, if you are using any web browser or uh, on your PC and you notice that it says allow pop-ups, uh, it's notice it's giving us a cannot connect to iTunes store. So we're going to go, okay, we'll figure that in a minute. Um, anyways, back to this. If you are trying to get on anything and it blocks a pop-up on your PC, it's going to block it up on the iPad. You won't know it, but it's just going to sit there and spin. So you would go here and turn this off. And then when it wants to block something, it's going to ask you, do you want to allow it or not allow it? I would turn this off. You can turn it on, but if you know you're going to use um, a web page or the reason I knew about this is because the databases, some of them are using pop-ups. Um, we would we turn this off. So I have this turned off on my iPad, and I'm just going to leave it that way. Um, the other things that you would notice on here uh, that we didn't go through were music. Um, this home sharing, I wouldn't deal with it. Uh, you're going to get into copyright issues because this is, if you have um, an iPhone, an iPad, uh, and you of your own and you bought music and you wanted them on both you definitely would want to do home sharing there but we're just gonna leave that your videos um, if you have a video playing do you want it to start over where you left off or do you want it to start from the beginning every time and photos do you want it to play like a slideshow or do you want it to stop or you want to do it manually um, we're going to uh, the other two things I, you can notice down here are Twitter and Facebook or automatics on here. So, <clears throat> so, we're going to use our existing Apple ID, which should be what we created. And we're going to try and get logged in here. And hopefully this will work this time. So we're going to get out of this home screen, or our settings here, and we're going to go back to our home screen. So again, remember these are the apps that come with the iPad, and they cannot be deleted. Now, if you'll notice, this right down here is called, the, um, it's kind of like an activity tray, things that you want, that you uh, go to always. So you can move these. So let's talk about moving things. Let's talk about um, fixing things up and putting things into folders. So... We're just going to cancel all that for the moment. What you want to do is click on an, um, on any of the apps or icons until you start seeing them shake around. Now, if it was an app that you could delete, I'm going to show you. Oh, of course it's not there. It would have a little X in the top left corner. But um, we don't have anything that can be deleted. But what we're going to do is put things together. So let's say I want my reminders with my calendars. Now notice, all I did was hold my finger on it until it kind of got bigger, drag it over on top of whatever app I wanted on, icon, and notice this one doesn't want to go. They're a little finicky, but they go. So I want all this together. You can keep it as productivity name, or you could call it whatever you want. Um, let's say, I'm going to call mine uh, notes slash calendar and done and I think I spelled calendar wrong but because I'm going to worry about that we're just going to call it notes and we're going to be done and click anywhere on the side of the screen and notice it moves around so notice it frees up some space on that page and what you you want to do that because once like I said once you get so many pages the iPad We'll put the, app, the apps on there for you, but it won't show them up. So let's talk about, let's say that happens. You And we're going to click the home screen to set everything. So now it's all set. 
So let's say you know you bought that app, but it's not showing anywhere up on your iPad. So if you take and swipe to the very first page, and let's say you're on the last page, you're on the seventh page of your 200 apps, whatever. If you push that little home button, three, uh, excuse me, push that home button, hold it in, it'll go to the search. This is where that um, in that in-depth search we were talking about earlier was. So let's say you know you you you're pretty sure you bought that that um, let's see iTunes um, iBook app. Well, if you bought it, it would show up in here. So it's not showing up. So let's say we bought Remind. We have Reminders. I want to know where Reminders is. Notice it automatically started noticing what I was trying to look for. Click on it, and it takes me straight to that app. So in here, in the Reminders, you can do just about anything. But we're going to get out of this because I'm going to show you what you can do with your school email and your school calendar, and it'll do that for you. Um, so at this point we're going to take a break. Alright, at this point we're going to take and turn my iPad because this, this to me is more comfortable. So right now what I'm going to show you is how to set up your email account um, so that it syncs with your, your school email and it also syncs with your school calendar that you may keep on your um, email address. <clears throat> so what we're going to go, we went to settings and here we're going to go back to mail and we're going to click add an account. Now if you'll see a whole list here, um, this is where you can add your Gmail account. Uh, if you created a Gmail, a Yahoo, if you have a personal AOL account, whatever you may use, um, you would choose on one of these. Our school uses Microsoft Exchange. Now here's some things that you're going to need to know and uh, you may want to write these down. So at this point you're going to do your email address. So mine is J. You're going to put your password in there, so don't look at that. Just kidding. And exchange and next. Now, these are some things, this is the things that I was telling you that you're going to need to write down. So, the server is mail. Dot azleisd.net the domain is azel and the username is finicky sometimes so it wants you to do your capital first initial capital first letter of your last name and your password's already in there exchange and we're going to click next everything's matched up we're all good so now what this is going to do, notice it's syncing with my mail. Any contacts that I have in my uh, email address at school, my calendars, any reminders that I've set up are going to be there. So we're going to click save. And it's all good. So I'm going to click the home button again to go home. And now I should be able to find my email. Well, I don't see it on here, but it's down here in my, in my active tray. So I'm going to click on it and <clears throat> notice there's nothing there. So we're going to go back to mail. We're going to go to inbox and there should be stuff there. Something's not working so we're going to go uh, back to our home screen and check on settings and see what's going on. So here we're, um, we notice your email exchange should be up here. It's working. I'm going to go back and I'm going to sync my mail for one month because maybe I have some information saved in my inbox. Um, notice my email is going off crazy because now I have 21 emails and these are all the different emails that I need to check right now these are all if if they're emails I've read they're not their emails that have not been read are gonna have a blue dot emails um, that have not that have been read won't have the dot so you should be able to click on anything there another thing that you're going to use this for is your calendars so go back you don't, if you don't remember where your calendars are, go to your search and know, it'll pull it up for you. So it will sync all the calendars that you have right now. If uh, you have a school calendar, 
for, for me, I have just one calendar, but I have had many calendars. You can look at it by day, by week, by month, or by your whole year. So as you can tell, April's pretty busy for me. So we're gonna go back to our home screen. Now let's talk about purchasing some apps. One of the places that you're going to purchase your apps, or the only place, is the App Store. So we're gonna click on the App Store. This is all the categories. This is gonna be a little overwhelming for you right now. So what I'm gonna suggest you do, if you are new to the iPad game, I'm gonna suggest that you go up here and you type in apps, APPS, Fire, and it should look for you. And Apps Fire's deal is what we're gonna look for. And this is an app that you're gonna download. And now what this app is, it's going to tell you every day that deals on apps that are paid. So if you wanted that $20 app and for some reason for today it goes on sale for free, it'll tell you. So you're going to click on free. And if this, we're going to cancel this for just a sec. If you wanted to um, purchase this app in that little box where it said free, it's also going to tell you the price. So you'll know how much it is before you buy it. You're going to click on install app. Now, again, I'm getting this message because I have not set up my app account. So I need to click on that again. Hopefully it's gonna work this time. Hasn't been used. We're going to review. Hopefully, it'll contact and get there. Okay, so when you are ready to purchase your apps for the very first time, it's going to take you to this screen here. Um, if you are concerned about putting your uh, financial information out on the web uh, via credit card and such, I would suggest that you click none or you'll, you never intend to purchase um, any apps paying for them. So it will let you choose none. Uh, if you get a gift card from a student for Christmas, lucky you, you can put the code in here later on. And there's your billing address information. I don't think you'll need to put it in there, so we're gonna try it. Click next. Ah, we gotta fill in the links. So we're going to put we're Mrs. our name here. Um, I'm going to put the school's address because I never intend to purchase apps. Uh, we need we're in Azel, Texas. Oops. Select a state. Notice to scroll, I'm just going up and down. And our zip code. We need our phone number. And again, I'm just going to put the school's phone number. Uh, however, you might want possibly to put your own personal information. Go next. And we are ready. So now let's add notice again. There's that box that says free so that I know I'm not purchasing, I'm not buying anything. So I'm going to install my app. I have to put my password in. So and you will notice there's a little status bar here. And as it's downloading, you'll see more and more close in. There's a little blue, it's kind of like it's a temperature thermometer thing. Uh, and when it's done, it will automatically go to this, it should go to this app open automatically. Um, and this app in particular, like I was telling you, it tells you daily uh, apps that come free or they're reduced in price. And you can set it to your specific needs. So if you only want to look for games, it's only going to look for games. If you wanted to look for business games, educational stuff, it's going to do that for you. And we're going to set that up in just one sec. So, and while that's doing that, you can do other things while it's downloading. So we're gonna click this home button here and it's gonna put it on this new page here. 
So, and I'm going to show you. So, a moment ago, we talked about <clears throat> putting apps, moving them around, and we talked about these weren't being, a <coughs> excuse me, these apps were not able to be deleted because they didn't have the X. Notice that's got the little circle X. So, all I would have to do is click on that, and it would ask me, do I want to delete this? I can, I'm going to push cancel for no. And you will be deleting it. It's not deleting it forever. It's just taking it off the iPad and putting it, for lack of a better term, in space. And then when you want it back on there, it'll come on. So to get it to stop moving around, again, push your home button and everything goes still. So let's open up Apps Fire and get this started. Apps Fires would like to send you push notifications. Remember, we talked about push notifications. These are those dings, dongs, whatever you have it set to do anytime there's something new. Um, I'm going to allow it. I'm going to say OK because I want to know when there's something new. And because I'm the first time I've ever done this, I'm going to click Next. Now it says it wants to know about us. Am I a gamer? Do I want to know about games? Not necessarily, So, but I'm a parent. And I want to know about student, uh, parenting apps. I want to know about children apps. Um, I'm not a student, so that's not going to help me. However, I am going to click on it because maybe it gives me things for my students. Um, I'm going to pick on the professional. I'm a geek because I like new things. I want to know what's out there. If you're an athlete or you're a coach or a trainer, you definitely might want to you might want to have that one. Okay, so you, to download apps, you want to go to the app store. There's two places you can download apps. Um, directly onto your iPad, you're going to go to App Store. Search for anything in here that you would like. Um, the apps fire I'm going to show you that we downloaded last time is going to give you some suggestions for different apps that you can, um, it'll give you deals of the day, it'll give you ideas of what, what's free out there, what's come free just for the day or so forth. So what we're going to do is we're going to download one more app just to show you. Search what you're looking for. Um, there's one called My, that Ms. Anderson just told me about script calculator and notice it's going to pop up already so I'm going to download this one notice again in the box it'll tell you how much it costs or if it's free and we're going to install app and it wants my password and so as long as that little circle up there is moving around it's downloading it's doing something and we should it should be downloading right here so it'll load first and then it install so it's going to take a few minutes while we're waiting you can notice all the other iPad the, uh, apps that I've downloaded um, that are, are recent, they're new. As soon as you open them, they won't be new anymore. So, let's um, talk about this app here. Um, I haven't got to play with it yet. So, a lot of apps, pretty much like I tell you, if, um, if you break it, we can fix it. So, don't ever be afraid to try something. Um, if I'm not mistaken, this takes a math problem and solves it for you. So, that's pretty cool. Let's do the square root of 67 over 75, if that equals anything. Ah, interesting. I like that. So, there's something uh, for you math teachers out there. There's a tutorial here, uh, notifications, settings. Like I said, I've just played with, and this tells you place value, you can fix all of that. So. We're going to get out of this, and I'm going to show you um, an interesting thing that you can do with your iPad. We've talked about uh, last week. So when you go to Settings, and you go down here to your General, and you go to Accessibility, and you go to Guided Access, you can... Um, open an app and if you wanted to limit what students can do on this you would turn your guided access on again we're going to set a passcode remember don't forget this passcode because if you forget it, it you're going to get yourself locked out so 
guided access is on, you don't know. The only time you're going to know if guided access is working is if you open an app. Let's open our calculator app again. And we're going to push the home button three times. One, two, three. And notice we have this that starts. We have the assistive touch, which is what we, uh, we're we going to do in just a second. I'm going to show you. And we're going to just start this. So let's say a kid, you're, uh, for example, star testing. Counselors would want to know this. For those students that have to have... Um, they have to have their test scribed and they have to write it out and then somebody else has to do it or they have to type it out. You can turn this, this guided access on and they can't get out of it. Notice it says guided access is enabled. Triple click the home button to exit. So you triple click it again but you have to put your passcode in. And if you don't tell your student, you wouldn't, they wouldn't know that. Another thing you can do with this, we're going to open up <coughs> a web browser. Um, and let's go to um, Star Telegram. And I probably just spelled that wrong. Ah! So, I spelled too many L's. So let's say you wanted them to go to a website and read maybe an article on the internet or uh, read an article on the uh, on a database, for uh, example. Um, I'm going to show you with the assistive touch. What you can do is once it opens, give it a moment. Of course, technology is slow when you need it to be fast. All right, so let's say you wanted um, your students to read this article about the West students head back to class in neighboring district. So you would turn your assistive touch on, one, two, three, home button, oops, one, two, three. And you're going to turn this portion on. It says circles the areas on the screen you would like to disable. That means you don't want the kids getting there. So you don't want them to get to anything that creates a link. So you can circle that and it hides that information. You can make this bigger, drop it down so they can see that information up there. They just can't click on it. Let's say you don't want these links open either. So therefore, click start. And all they're going to be able to do is go to this right here. This link and it will pull it up. Notice you can move it around. But notice there's nothing else. So if I wanted... So let's say... Um, Oh, see, I've got to wait 10 seconds. I put the wrong passcode in. So let's say that I was the teacher and I decided I didn't want these links. I would make sure and just cut out what I want the students to look at. <clears throat> so, and then I would do that. All right. So we're going to turn that off. Now, I told you that there were two places you can download apps. You can do that here in your iPad. The second place you can do it is in the iTunes store, <clears throat> but that is on your on your desktop. Um, so you would get out, and most of you have a, a laptop. So you, but the first thing you need to do with your laptop is you need to download iTunes to your laptop. So we're going to download that. So this may take a, a minute or two. So, all right, to it, uh, to download this, it's going to ask you a few questions. Do you want it to email me new on? iTunes and special iTunes offers. Um, I'm going to click no because I've got enough junk mail. Do you want to keep me up to date with Apple News? No, I don't care. I'm going to put my email address in here. Download now. And you should find notice it's working there should be a iTunes icon that comes up on your um, desktop it's not there yet because it's not completely fully downloaded <clears throat> but you would want uh, iTunes on your desktop because um, you get this is where you will sync your information and like I said you can buy I buy apps and music in iTunes store on your computer or you can buy it in the app store on your iPad. So let's go here. I don't see an icon so I'm going to go to my start menu 
and I'm going to put in iTunes and it should find it for me. It's going to look for it. And notice it doesn't have it there yet because I think it is still downloading. Okay, so when everything is downloaded, um, if you've noticed just a moment ago, I use Mozilla Firefox as a web browser. Uh, a good portion of you are probably using Internet Explorer and just go through the download steps for downloading the, the um, actual information. So this is what you're going to get. Um, it gives you the welcome screen. Do you agree to share details about the library? Blah, blah, blah. We agree to all of that. We want to go to the iTunes store. Now, iTunes, um, again, if you're, if you're buying apps, you really, most of the time, you most likely want to buy them on your actual iPad itself. But let's say that you're buying music that you would like to play in your classroom while your kids are studying or practicing or some sort. You definitely want to use the iTunes store on your laptop. Um, if you have CDs or music that you've always used in your classroom and you want to put them on your iPad, this is the place you would go to. Um, there's TV shows, movies, books. Anything you can buy on your iPad, you can buy on the iTunes store. So what you would want to do is, with your power cord that you have, um, detach the USB section from the power, power bar. Plug it into your laptop or your computer, whichever you're using. Plug it in like you're going to charge it on your iPad. And then your computer should, in theory, recognize it. Notice mine, uh, it's installing the device driver, so it's looking for it right now. And hopefully it'll pull up. And what'll happen is, um, whatever I have on my, I, my iPad will be here in my iTunes. So in order for it to do that, I'm going to log in. accessing iTunes it should be logging in and it should the information that I have on my iPad should show up here on my screen in my iTunes store and this is just another way for you to back up and save whatever you have so for example if um, you had to restore your iPad for some reason you, you got locked out of your iPad and you had to completely shut it down and wipe it. It's stored here in your, in your iTunes store, in your iTunes account. So there's my iPad. It's showing up. It's backing up. There's five steps it's going to go through. Um, it's looking for anything that I might have in there. It's preparing to sync it. So right now it's syncing anything that I have on my iPad. If I have music, movies, TV shows, I, apps, books, whatever the case may be. It's looking for all those on the actual iPad and putting it here in my iTunes account. And so what this can do is if you have, let's say you have an iPhone. Um, this is one of the reasons I told you to create a separate account than your iTunes uh, on your iPhone account. Simply because you would have something... Um, that you would have personal going to school and you just wouldn't want anything um, mixed matching or going back and forth. And if you'll notice on here on your iPad you have this little arrow that keeps moving around in a circle. That means it's syncing, so, which is fine. You just want to make sure that as long as it's doing that, you, anything that you add, it's, it, you need, it's going to slow the sync process down. And sometimes you're syncing because this is the first time I have synced my iPad and it's going to take a few minutes. Okay, so a couple of things once it's synced, you're going to see that I have a good portion of video on here, which um, I don't know what it is, but we'll look. Um, we have apps. We have um, other, which would be like music or other information that's stored on there. So this up here tells you 
it's a 16 gig. I have my battery life is 18, 89 percent. I can check for an update. If I want to update from here, I can. Notice it says that I'm at the current version, so I'm going to go okay. Um, if I want to back up my information, I can back it up to this computer or I can back it up to iCloud. I'm going to choose uh, iCloud and I'm going to apply it down here. And so I have 7.46 gigabytes free. Um, I can go over here to my info. This tells me about my sync contacts, things like that, um, apps. Uh, those are all my apps. So let's say, oh, click on music, excuse me. So let's say this is what my home screen on my iPad looks like. And I want all those together. We showed, we talked about last week how to put them all into envelope, uh, the same folders. And uh, let's say that I wanted this set of apps to be before my second set of apps. So m maybe you teach math and history. Um, so you would like maybe have a math page and then you would have a history page. And you could put all those together. Just whatever you, whatever you do on your iPad, you can do exactly here on the actual uh, uh, desktop itself. So you can move it, you can, and this is sometimes a little easier to move around with the mouse than actually doing it on your iPad. If you wanted to go buy music, um, here's where you, this would sync your music. We're not actually buying anything. This is in our library. This means this is what's on the actual iPad. So um, this is movies. Let's see, what do I have? I don't, it doesn't show anything, so I'm going to have to go check out why it's got a movie showing. TV shows, photos, if you have any photo, photos. And then on this actual iPad, so here we go. <clears throat> I don't have any music, but I have movie. I have a, a movie I downloaded um, that I that I have <clears throat> Enet source with. So these are things I purchased. So I'm going to go back to summary, and I'm done with in my library. I'm going to apply anything that I changed, and it's going to sync it again. So um, if I wanted to buy anything, I could go to iTunes Store here. Go to the app store if I wanted to buy books. I would go to the books there. Now this right here is when you, oh, that's interesting, Divergent 3 is coming out. Um, when you purchase books in here, it's going to go to your iBooks account, which is going to be um, automatically on your iPad. But let's say that you have a Kindle at home. And you want to read some of your Kindle books on your iPad. So you would go to your Kindle account, or excuse me, you would go to the iTunes store and download the Kindle app. So it's looking for it right now. The last thing. One, other, one last thing I'm going to show you. So let's say that you um, use your iPad to take attendance. Uh, and it's a good thing, well of course, this is, Safari is not going to open because well, let's spell Azel ISD right there, guys. Um, like I said, so let's say that you're walking around class and you need to take attendance or you're... Excuse me. Let's get the W. There we go. So you're taking attendance. I'm going to show you how to put a web page as an icon on your, um, as what we call an icon on your uh, home screen. So you, I'm going to show you for your attendance. So you would go to wherever you would find attendance, which would be under staff. I'm going to do the grade book. So this is the screen you would want. Sorry, we're gonna exit out of that. So this is the screen you would want for attendance. Does ever you see this little box with an arrow? You're gonna click on it, and we're gonna go to Add to Home Screen. Uh, all these other options are different. I could put it on Facebook. Why I would I would never suggest you do that. Uh, you could print it, you could copy it, you could mail it, you could tweet it. Don't do that either. Add to Home Screen, and then I'm gonna change this to Gradebook. I'm gonna add. And there's my icon. And I can put that, let's say I want to move it on my, on my iPad to the first page. 
click and hold it till they all jiggle. Hold it up here till the next screen comes, and there you go. So whenever you click on it, there it is. So that's one way, and you can do that with any um, any web page that you're looking at. You can make it an icon on your desktop, or excuse me, your home screen.